as you know, windmills used to look like this. We had them in Ireland too. Years ago, I built an experimental version of one just to see what sort of power they produced. But I forgot one important thing. Mine was about 20 feet across and I set it up on a scaffold tower in the middle of the field. And the moment I let it go, <laughs> it started spinning and it's got faster and faster and faster. Now I had a strap over the main horizontal shaft as a brake, but it just wasn't enough. Even with all my weight on the strap, the veins just continued to speed up until they were roaring and the whole tower began to shake. And I was shaking too, it was terrifying. And in the end, I dropped the strap and ran. <laughs> hoping, you know, hoping that it wouldn't hit me as it disintegrated. So I ran as fast as I could away from the mill. When I looked around, it had disappeared because <laughs> it was coming out of the sky. It had gone up in the air and it was coming down very fast and it was still spinning around. Um, I saw it about 60 feet up, but maybe it got further. But anyway, <laughs> it hit the ground very hard and smashed itself to pieces and buried itself in the ground. I remember that because Sandra was cross because she thought I nearly killed her horses. <laughs> Which wasn't true. And they weren't even in the field. I was in the field. Anyway, 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 anyway. The point of the story, of course, is that windmills need governors to stop them spinning out of control at crazy speeds. Now, these traditional ones were governed by the millers themselves. They added or removed sailcloth, depending on how much wind was blowing. That was a lot of work, and I imagine only really successful in steady winds. Not so good if it was gusty. Those mills also had huge brake wheels on them, on the inside, but that was to stop them, not to slow them. Now these ones have a mechanism that turns them out of the wind when it gets too strong, which is good for avoiding catastrophe, but means having to climb the tower often to reset it. And of course, these ones have clever mechanisms and motors inside that rotate the blades to the correct angle depending on the wind speed. But some of these smaller wind generators don't have any speed limiters and around here they regularly blow themselves to bits in stormy weather. Now I'm not that fussed about generating electricity here. All those battery banks put me off. But we do have a lot of wind and there are plenty of other things you can do with wind power apart from generating electricity. So I was wondering again about making something that could look after itself in windy conditions. And who wouldn't want one of these in their back garden? <laughs> it would need to self-regulate though, otherwise it wouldn't last long. So I'm building a model to test an idea. It's just a baby model though, so it won't kill anyone if it fails. I'm starting with a broken deck chair to get the thin tubing out of it. I need those for the arms to mount the wind vanes on. Now many people have developed speed sensors and relays and actuators that would do the job. And my plan is much more simple, as you'd expect. I'm thinking that the vanes will try to spin out sideways as they spin faster, won't they? And as they move outwards, they could be encouraged to twist. Offering less of a surface for the wind to act against. And they wouldn't have to twist by much. Just 45 degrees should be enough. So I cut slots in the pipe and widened them so they could accommodate a 6mm bolt. Now 
Now it seems to me that the spring that keeps them in position is the most critical thing in this design. Too stiff and the vane won't be able to move outwards and twist and too soft and the veins would just flop outwards and no speed would be reached at all. I mounted two vanes to a hub and the hub is held onto a shaft and the shaft fits onto bearings and the bearings are mounted on a heavy lump of wood and the heavy lump of wood sits on a post in the ground. And it did spin round, but it wasn't windy enough for the mechanism to be activated. So while I was waiting for some more wind to get here, <laughs> never have to wait very long, I made two more wind vanes because obviously a windmill needs four vanes, surely. And this time I chose a different post further from the glass house. <laughs> And it spun and the feathering device did kick in. So that was good, but the problem was that it worked too well, I think. As soon as it reached critical speed, the vanes twisted and the brakes came on full power and the windmill jammed to a stop. So it was like driving a car in first gear and slamming the brakes on every few yards. They're not very satisfactory. Now, for a while I was wondering whether this would happen and what sort of dampers would help. If I put dampers on the springs, would that solve the problem? Would slowing down their travel so that they'd still work, but more slowly. But then I realized that if I just staggered the activation of them, so one after another, then that should do the trick. So I drilled some more holes for the springs so they all had different tensions and tried that and that made a much smoother working machine which is great news but maybe it was a bit slow but that was easily rectified because I just poured the spring that was under the least tension until it, it became the stiffest one. So none of the springs activate until the mill is spinning a little bit faster. And guess what? That worked. And that means that you could choose the working speed of your mill quite easily. And it shouldn't go much beyond that before the brakes kick in one after another. So I'm quite pleased with this experiment and, uh, <laughs> and I can't help imagining a 20 foot version of one of these or bigger 25 foot version of one of these on a nice stone tower would be quite exciting wouldn't it but too expensive for me to actually build one of those shame though isn't it hmm. and then just for interest I locked all the veins so they couldn't be twisted to see what happens if they don't have any mechanism. And away it went. Not too scary actually because the veins are very small but you get the idea of what would happen if you let them spin freely.
Anyway, I thought that might be interesting. I found it interesting. Take care. See ya.